In the 90s, round about the time of Nokia phone dominance, when it was all tiny little phones, uh, these things called flashing stickers were available and they were self-powering. It's a, an echo of like the anti-5Gers. Some of them were sold as anti-radiation devices. And this one says, feature, this flashing sticker absorb electromagnetic radiation during the use of cellular phones. You know, they just said, stick this in your phone, it's going to protect you from harm. I shall explain why that was completely wrong in a moment. However, to show you what these look like first, I'm going to zoom down onto this one in the middle here. And I'm going to dim the lights and I'm going to warn you in advance it's going to flicker because I'm going to emulate what it looked like I've actually had, had to hard, hardwire up with a resistor and lead here, but it will show you what they look like in the back of the phone. So I'm just going to make sure that's in focus. That's probably not in focus now. And one moment, please. I'm just going to put the lights out. There is going to be flickering. So your phone call is coming in and the thing would start doing this. It basically go with the sort of like pulses of RF energy from your phone and it would flicker and strobe like this. And inside it's got three little LEDs. I'm going to bring the light back. One moment. I'm not sure if you're even going to be able to see the colour here because it just swamps out. Let me turn the voltage to these down a little bit and see. No, it's very hard to see the colour. It just swamps out as lights. But anyway, trust me when I say there's a yellow one, a red one and a blue one. But anyway, let's get this off the bench, out the way, turn the power supply off. And I shall show you some of the circuit boards in these. Uh, flash flicker, they're called here. Works on mobile phones with an internal aerial. Will not affect normal use of the mobile phone. No batteries required. It's worth mentioning that... Uh, I'll just contain this down a little bit. It's worth mentioning that uh, the reason they say works with a phone with an internal aerial is because in the early days it was all external aerials in the phone. You did get plug-in phone aerials that also flashed using similar circuitry. Uh, oh, I shall show you before I go any further. Why these stickers were bad news. So, if this is you, with your phone, and you've got it up to your ear, uh, what actually happens when you make a call is it tries to communicate with the remote tower. So, in the past, in the old days, they used to be big beacon towers in the distance, and they used to be considerable distance, so the phone would basically increase its power until it could communicate. And if you blocked that signal, if you stuck on a little sticker here that was going to absorb some of that to make some lights flash, or if you put on your magnetic shielding sticker to protect your brain from the radiation, it would reduce the phone's ability to actually communicate the signal. And up to a certain degree, it would increase its power up to the point it could finally make communication. So by putting these stickers on, it uh, increased the power your phone needed to actually communicate with the remote station. Part of the reason they don't work these days is the change of frequencies. Those ones in that 2G era used to be 300 megahertz to about 1.9 gigahertz. These days the frequencies are much wider. But also, instead of like one big remote station, you have buildings with a little unit on the side and you have maybe a electrical pillar with a little thing on top and they're all just dotted all around you. So when you actually communicate with them, your phone communicates with the nearest one that's available, it's only going to be a very low level signal. It's like your home house Wi-Fi. That's the point of 5G. That's how they get the speed and the uh, the sort of like the reduced signals uh, and the number of phones that can connect all the time. It's because they're not relying on these old towers anymore. It's just lots of low power ones dotted about. But it's reassuring to know that people that were against 5G uh, were also against every other flavour in the past. Let's bring in the showcase. So here's an ugly, ugly sticker when you see it up close. It's really ugly. But anyway, it is what it is. These are fish. So one of the first versions had surface mount LEDs soldered on. There's actually three in series, and the voltage I measured across that is about 7 volts. That's quite a lot when you realise the antenna. This little package here, it looks like a transistor, is actually just two diodes, usually both going the same direction. So uh, the positive will be feeding from that middle tap down to here and the other one will be going from the other direction. That's not helpful, is it? This circuit board was notable also for being single-sided because this is a picture from the back. There's the dual uh, diode package. And this zigzag here is the antenna that was picking up that energy. And there's the LEDs in the series. 
Uh, the next evolution of these, and I don't know if it is a good evolution, because this one, keep in mind that the tracks are on the one side in this one. The next evolution was this equally ugly one. I'm not sure who was in charge of designing these stickers. But if you look very carefully, you will see that instead of using that uh, two diode package, they've actually got two diodes, tiny little diode chips on these pads here. And then they've got the bare LED chips on here with the little jump wires going across. More or less the same arrangement, but they've just uh, put the raw chips bonded in the surface. And with this one, the antenna, and I don't know why they did this, they could have had it on the same side, but they actually used a double-sided board for no good reason and had the antenna snake in the back of it under the sticker. That's odd. They could have just saved the extra cost, plated through holes, I don't know why they did that. Next evolution, equally shit design. Uh, the three LEDs are still in series, bonded on, but there's just a single diode, and they're using the three LEDs in series as the other diode, which is actually kind of sensible when you think about it. And the design of this circuit board is even simpler. Again, they've got the plated through holes onto an antenna at the back. Again, they didn't need to do that. Notice that this little pat track here, just in case you want to reverse engine at home, actually comes round here, down here, and over there. Uh, but it was ultimately the two little snaky antennas. And note that uh, the snaky antennas, if you look at them all, these two are fairly similar. Were they a very specific length? I'm guessing they were. But the one with the discrete LED soldered on has a much longer, thinner antenna. I'm not sure what the advantages of each were. But anyway, let us get back to the notepad and I shall show you what the circuit diagram is. It's very, very simple. That's it. It's the diode in series with uh, the three LEDs and then an opposite diode, uh, just so that, you know, the sort of push-pull effect, effectively, of the signal. The inductive coupling, perhaps, I'm not really sure, gets coupled across one direction, but it goes through the diodes in the other direction. And that modified version with the missing diode just got rid of that one there. So it was effectively just the LEDs across there. And the antennas. Were they a specific length? The RF geeks will know. But keep in mind that the frequency range of these was roughly 300 megahertz up to 1.9 gigahertz. So there may have been a sweet spot antenna, but it would have been just fairly random what you got. But that is it. Now, if you do go online and you look for flashing stickers for your phone, you will find them. You'll find, hold on, let me just grab a picture of one. I've, I've lost them. They're here somewhere. You'll find this version. But this one is completely different. This is designed to go with your near-field communication. I shall make a video about this once I find the stickers. They're very small. I've lost them. But uh, these stickers uh, use a little inductive pickup. And they've got two diodes to two capacitors. The two capacitors are common onto one of the connections. The two diodes are common to the other. And uh, so this diode is charged positive. This one's negative, And the LEDs just slapped right across that. So that as your near field communication communicates, it just makes the LED pulse just while it's looking for a response. Uh, and you're supposed to stick these, they're not much smaller than this, on your fingernail. And then sort of put your nail varnish over it and make yourself look pretty and have flashing nails. I would say that's pointless, but I was right into my flashing stickers in the 90s and my flashing antenna for my Nokia, Nokia, should I say, that uh, the little coil inside, let me doodle that, let me doodle that. The little coil inside the Nokia had this arrangement, but it was literally tapped uh, across blob part of the coil, and it was terrible. Uh, the RF... Posse will hate me for using that antenna because it the antennas in mobile phones were tuned very precisely. They were a fixed wire length inside for the frequencies they transmitted on, and sticking LEDs and diodes across them was not the done thing. But that's it. That's the flashing LED stickers of yesteryear, which are not commonly used. I couldn't make these flash at all, not even on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi router. router. Um, I tried them on various things, tried them on the phone. They're just low power and a different frequency. They just don't work anymore. Um, otherwise, they would still sell them. But that's it. The interesting flashing stickers, self-powering flashing stickers, effectively, from yesteryear.